So we'll look for those emphasis in God's word this morning. And let's begin our worship then singing together the first hymn, 224. If you're easily able, please stand. Let's strive to worship our God in spirit and in truth, following the service of word and sacrament. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and to worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise.
Let us pray. Dear Lord God, you reveal your sovereign power chiefly in showing mercy and withholding judgment. Please come to us with your kindness and love and give us strength to obey your commands. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First portion of God's word we'll look at this morning comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. He pictures a, a, a scrumptious banquet as the, the gospel of forgiveness with an invitation for all of us to feast for free. Hey, all of you who are thirsty, come to the water, even if you have no money. Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money on something that is not bread? Why do you waste your labor on something that does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Satisfy your appetite with rich food. Turn your ear toward me and come to me. Listen so that you may continue to live. Yes, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the faithful mercies promised to David. Look, I appointed him as a witness for peoples, a leader and commander of peoples. Look, you will call out to a nation you do not know, and a nation that does not know you will run to you. On account of the Lord your God, because of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is God's word. So we join in singing the verse of the day. If you're easily able, please stand for our gospel lesson recorded in Matthew's gospel, chapter 14. Jesus shows his power as the Son of God by providing a free physical meal. When Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place to be alone. When the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus got out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. When evening came, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away, so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They told him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he replied. Then he instructed the people to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish. After looking up to heaven, he blessed them. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave the food to the people. They all ate and were filled. They picked up 12 basketfuls of what was left over from the broken pieces. Those who ate were about 5,000 men not even counting women and children. This is our gospel lesson.
grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we turn our attention to the appointed second lesson or the epistle reading for this particular Sunday. And it is from the eighth chapter of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. And we begin specifically at verse 35. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecutions or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the text for this morning. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, this comes as a surprise to none of you. Children, particularly from the age two to age five, ask a lot of questions. There have been so many studies on this but it's remarkable, truly remarkable, in a, in a fully functional family where you have strong relationships and good communication between children and parents. And if you have a parent or parent's home on a regular basis, you're talking up to 280 questions on average, to the every day. Huh. Even in less functional families, where there is some kind of a disconnect or some kind of a persistent absence of adult with a child, a child is still going to ask an average of 75 questions every day. And in case you're interested, the, the champions, according to these studies, are four-year-old girls. They ask the most questions. The point is, they're an awful lot like me, and they're an awful lot like you, and they are also like the Apostle Paul. Did you notice how this text begins? It begins with a question. What will separate us from the love of Christ? And it ends with a very affirming and positive answer. Well, that's the pattern that we're going to follow here. It's an important question. It basically asks for affirmations of assurances, of safety, of belonging, Will everything be okay? And the answer comes back very strongly, yes. Despite accusations and despite afflictions that are part of your life. So the Apostle Paul begins with the question, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Now wait a minute. Why would the Apostle Paul ask that question? Why would this in any way be on the heart and the mind of the Roman Christians? What I mean is, is it any secret that again and again and again and again, the statements of Scripture are just so clear and so often repeated? Uh, do these sound familiar, brothers and sisters? Huh? I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will never leave you or forsake you. 
I am with you always to the end of the age. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. There isn't a lack of clarity anywhere in all of those statements, and they're repeated. So why would they ask the question about what's going to separate us from the love of God in Christ? Well, the Apostle Paul knows that living in a real world as real Christians, you not only have the promises, but you also have emotional damaging realities that you have to deal with. And the first one that he deals with in this whole chapter is the one of accusations. I'm talking of accusations about the sin and the guilt that you have by not obeying God perfectly. I'm talking about accusations that you parents don't always set the greatest examples for your children and your grandchildren. I'm talking about how you let each other down, how you let yourself down, how your neighbors, your acquaintances may look at you and cock their head and say, what is this all about? Accusations. In Revelation chapter 12, there is a magnificent, beautiful vision which portrays the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over Satan, over the devil. Now perhaps you recall that the word Satan means enemy, adversary, opponent. And devil, with its etymology, means liar, slanderer. Well, after this glorious vision of Christ's victory over Satan, in Revelation 12 we read, the accuser of our brothers, Satan, who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you and he is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. You can count on accusations. You can count on those uh, nagging doubts, fears that are going to come and attack your conscience. Oh, and the devil has a lot of help. Remember Ephesians chapter 6? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Don't underestimate the reality and the power of accusations that are hurled against you on a regular basis. Our estimation of ourselves our appraisal of our relationship to God at any given moment has a powerful, powerful impact on how we carry out every day's duties and responsibilities and privileges. And the Apostle Paul, dealing with that issue, had begun right before our text for this morning, and he deals with that. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Did you catch all of that? There is so much in that small group of sentences. First of all, did you notice that he deals with completed actions, past tense? It's all in the rearview mirror. Christ died. Christ was raised. The father did not spare his own son. 
The Father gave his Son up for us. It's done. It's complete. And then he emphasizes how that completed activity serves as the foundation, or if you will, the launching pad, the platform from which ongoing divine activities flourish. And then he speaks of graciously giving us all things and Christ interceding on a continual basis for us. And we also notice that it's all inclusive. It's not a matter of we get A and B but not C and D. We get everything. Everything that is completed through the work of your substitute, Jesus Christ, continues constantly to affirm that you have the forgiveness of sins, you have a right relationship to God, that your status before God is that of nothing less than sainthood. You are God's holy people, and no one can change that. In other words, is everything going to be okay? Really? Yes. <laughs> Despite all accusations, the work of Jesus is intact, complete, and it counts for you individually as well as all of us together. But still the questions will come, and the Apostle Paul knows that. And he knows that in addition to accusations, there's also the daily afflictions. And now he deals with those. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Did you notice the, the, the large collection of words that he strings together? And after mentioning trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, he then launches into another section where he deals with these couplets these other afflictions that are part of a Christian's daily life. And then he mentions very specifically the heaping up of the words and the concepts where he has death and life, and he has angels and rulers, and he has the present and the future. And then he ends up with anything and everything else in all of creation. All of these can contribute to our afflictions. And that's the reality. The heaping up of these words, of course, is done with purpose. It reminds us, it impresses upon us that we are so weak and so frail. We are creatures, not creators. And we have so many limitations. No wonder we then ask, despite all of God's promises, will everything be okay? And the answer is given very strongly. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Absolutely nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. But in this section, maybe you noticed it. He uses a phrase that he basically took from the sons of Korah in the Old Testament, specifically from Psalm 44. For your sake, Lord, we face death all day long. For your sake, Lord, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Now let's go back to Psalm 44 briefly. I wrote those particular verses and that paragraph that it comes from on a little piece of paper here. This is what is said in Psalm 44. Put yourself in it. All of these bad things, and he had mentioned quite a number of those, had come upon us even though we had not forgotten you, we had not been false to your covenant, our hearts had not turned back, 
Our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us. You covered us over with deep darkness. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. What this is, is one of the most powerful reminders that the love of God is such a tremendous part of your life that it will not spare you from affliction. It will not shield you from hardship and difficulty. That is the love of God in action. That is exactly what it is. You can't lose because of the love of God. And this is what the sons of Korah learned. This is what the apostle Paul learned. This is what the Romans were learning. This is absolutely comfort upon comfort. There's nothing accidental. So if you ask, is everything going to be okay? Even with all of these afflictions, God says, absolutely. I gave you those afflictions. I'm the one who gives you that as much as I give you the pleasures and the joys. It's a package deal because I know what's best for you at any given moment, at any time, and also for your loved ones. Starting in the 1940s, psychologists and sociologists have been building the so-called hierarchy of human needs. What are the things that we as human beings need the most? What's number one, number two, number three? And they're very consistent. All of the studies, number one, as human beings, we need physical needs filled. Now we're talking the big four. We're talking food, we're talking water, we're talking shelter, and we're talking sleep. Every human being needs those. Then comes number two, and that's always in the area of safety, security, stability, if you will. Now that's why children, of course, often ask those questions. It has to do with, is it okay with me? And then the third category, right next to it, love and a sense of belonging. I belong here and I am loved. Do you see how the sacred scriptures, do you see how our text satisfies those hierarchies of human needs? Because this is your creator and your redeemer that is talking to you. No wonder the apostles in the book of Acts, whenever they were beaten, whenever they were imprisoned, whenever they were bawled out royally or thrown out of cities, banned from regions, that we constantly read phrases like, well, they were left rejoicing because they were counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the sake of Jesus. And they were filled with joy when they were expelled because they knew that this was all for the Lord's sake and they were going to be just fine despite the afflictions. Let us close by talking about something relatively common in our lives. Corn. Yeah, corn. Uh, you have sweet corn and you have field corn. And if you put some pressure on those kernels of corn, and if you turn up the heat like to 350, 355 degrees, what are you gonna get? <laughs> You're gonna get some hard, brittle, essentially worthless corn. It's good for nothing. But then there's a third kind of corn, isn't there? Popcorn. Put that under a little bit of pressure. Raise the heat up to 350 degrees. What do you got? <laughs> it blossoms into a joy and a pleasure for people. Why is that? You know the answer. It's that our Creator 
made popcorn different than sweet corn and field corn. And when the Holy Spirit graciously invite, invaded your hearts and your lives, he recreated you and me. And now we have the ability to connect those dots much, much better. And we react differently to pressure and to the heat of persecution. Because when we ask, is everything going to be okay? We have the answer. Absolutely. Yes. Despite the accusations of Satan, despite the afflictions, even for the Lord's sake. So let us do what the apostles did. <laughs> let us go on our way rejoicing. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together and we speak together the Nicene Creed. This is what we believe and teach. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Dear Lord God, our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning with hearts that are filled with, with gratitude, that nothing can separate us from your love, and because of that, everything will be okay. Everything will be okay when we fall into sin once again. The blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, cleanses us from all of those sins, and our enemy Satan cannot accuse us. Everything will be okay when we go through difficult times in lives persecutions for holding faithfully to you, or trials, inflictions that are a necessary part of living in a world that's been ruined, destroyed by sin. It'll be okay, Lord, because in accordance with your promise, you will work all things for the good. You know what is best for us, good times or hard times. Please help all of us to remember that, to have peace right now at a time in our country's, yes, our world's history, that things don't always seem to be okay, when worries and doubts about the unknown or how this will go or how that will go can, can cause us to lose sleep. Because of you, Lord, we have the confidence everything will be okay. Help us to truly uh, live as Lord's Prayer Christians who really live just for today, looking to you for daily bread and for daily blessing. We ask, uh, Lord, that you would help our country's leaders at every level make decisions that will be for the benefit of 
all the different people of, of our country, uh, all the different things that need to happen or go on. Uh, we ask, Lord, for the help and the intervention uh, of you and the Holy Spirit working in the hearts of believers or, or, or to, to have your fear put into the hearts of those who are unbelievers so that there can be you know, peace and, and safety in our country uh, for, for all people. And please uh, bless and, and keep safe, especially all of those who have a, a very difficult job of, of trying to, to have peace and order, keep people safe, make rules or laws that, that will benefit one another. Uh, we uh, want to thank you, Lord, for taking our sister Holly Messinger out of this world that has many difficulties. We thank you for preserving her faith and now giving her the joy in heaven. She truly understands uh, that banquet, that feast that you've pictured so many different times uh, in the words of scripture. Uh, we also uh, come before you on behalf of Helmut and Helene Regala, who are privileged today to celebrate their 63rd wedding anniversary, and Helene's able to be with us this morning, as well as John and Ebba Studeman also with us this morning, who got to celebrate 27 years uh, of marriage on August 14th. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for them. Thank you for always making everything okay. And we would ask in your mercy and in your love that uh, you would continue to hold your hand of blessing over them. Give them an increasing love and affection and, and joy and happiness as they serve you together as married couples. We also pray on behalf of the Scott Hyman family. Uh, Scott, a younger man with four kids, a brother in the faith from an area wells congregation. In your wisdom, uh, you have made it clear that his time on this earth is short doesn't go with our wisdom when someone young with young kids is, is going to be going to heaven. So Lord, we just ask for peace and comfort for the family. Help them to remember that everything will be okay and give them many people in their lives to support and help uh, those who are stuck living in the sin-filled world uh, with, with joy and health in the days ahead. We also commit to you uh, uh, various members of our congregation uh, and you know who all they are, and they're the family members who continue to struggle with, with health issues. Lord, please come and help, always in the way that you know is best. And hear us as we bring you today's personal prayers. For other needed blessings, we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. And now come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And then so that you would know you are forgiven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of sins. Also take and drink, for this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of your Lord Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Also, take and drink, for this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of your Lord Jesus Christ, poured out, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. And also take and drink, for this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of your Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. And also take and drink, for this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of your Lord Jesus, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Also take and drink, this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of your Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Also take and drink, for this is the true blood of your Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. May these strengthen you and keep you joined to him in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Hear of the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Good morning. good morning. So good to have all of you with us in person or online worshiping today. I want to give a special thank you to Pastor Bivens for his encouragement for us from God's Word. Good words to hold on to today, the rest of the week, the rest of our lives. I would like to draw your attention to some of the announcements in the service folder. For those watching online, click the news and notes portion on our website. Uh, next weekend is dedication weekend for our new facility uh, with a uh, dedication special service as well as open house and then a ribbon cutting ceremony between services on Sunday morning. We also like to uh, remind you that for those of you who are signing up for the in-person worship, that no matter what the size of your family, you always enter quantity one. If you enter more than that, it'll throw off the count by taking up more places, more pew spots. So always enter only quantity one, no matter whether the family size is one or 15. Uh, we're also gonna be resuming our kids club between uh, Sunday services. And when we get to September, we need some help there. You see some information on a, uh, a meeting coming up, as well as contact information if you wanna help be a part of that. The uh, St. Jacoby Garden Club fledgling already going to work. Could use more people who want to get together, have some fun, and uh, make everything look uh, beautiful. And then uh, uh, as we're approaching uh, the, the beginning of a new uh, school year, we still do have some spots in our 3K and 4K. So if you know of neighbors or family members, friends who might be looking for them, uh, there's your contact uh, information uh, is on our website uh, as well as the service folder. Those are the highlights for today. I wish you all God's richest blessings. Because of God's love for you and Jesus, you can always know everything will be okay. <laughs>